Welcome to the programme. We begin the news hour with a special coverage of Gaza. Palestinian and Israeli negotiators have so far failed to agree along the truce that talks in Cairo. Israel is reported to have offered an extension to the existing ceasefire by 72 hours. But Hamas is warning that its demands for an end to the siege must be met. Meanwhile, the people of Gaza are doing their best to pick up the pieces, communities, homes and families destroyed by Israeli force of arms. Now, since Israel's offence started a month ago, 64 Israeli soldiers and three civilians, including a Thai national, have been killed. Gaza's health ministry says 1,886 Palestinians have been killed. The UN says nearly three quarters of them are civilians. More than 9,500 Palestinians have been injured and just over 200,000 are still living in UN shelters. Now, Andrew Simmons is in northeastern Gaza in Sujai and joins me from there. Now, a, a very difficult time, uh, Andrew, for those trying to, as you say, pick up the pieces. How are they coping uh, and who have you been talking to? So uh, this whole crisis has a profound effect on children and children People under the age of 18 form the majority of the 1.8 million population in Gaza. And the sort of destruction you're dealing with, and this is extreme, but let me just take you across here, uh, where this is an area, a residential area, right beside a business district. But something like 2,000 families are living in the area as a whole. And imagine the number of children amongst them. They had a warning about this attack, this barrage of attack from air, land and sea. But many people in many other areas didn't get a warning. And so many children have died. Now, in the two previous conflicts, there's been a snowball effect on the whole effects on the minds of those who survived, those who have witnessed awful things. But this time round, the damage has been more extensive and the injuries to the mind even more so. How are the children coping? They're playing now, but this is street therapy in a place where you never have to look far for a reminder of what Gaza is going through. The team of child psychologists are using basic techniques to identify traumatized children and calm the stress of others. Every child here under seven has lived through three conflicts in Gaza, and this one has been the worst. With whole districts decimated, the search for bodies under the rubble is still going on, and the ever-present fear that the ceasefire could end and the killing could start again. The intensive bombardments have been on such a scale that Gaza has never seen before. This, a school that took a direct hit. And with all the devastation comes the damage that can't be patched up, that can't be rebuilt. This sort of damage, the trauma of children. 13-year-old Ahmed Bakr's brother was one of four boys killed while playing on a beach. Every time I think of him, I feel I'm choking. I feel him playing alongside me. My heart says he didn't die. He's in this home with us. It all seems unreal. Their faces will never fade from my mind. They're innocent children. What have they done? There's no doubt this family need help. Normally, psychologist Hassan al Zayda would be on hand to give treatment, but not right now. His family home has been blown up. His mother is dead, along with three brothers and two other relatives. Because I lost uh, six of my family. <sighs> now I have to, to take care of myself and to take care of uh, the rest of my family. Now receiving condolences for his losses, Dr. Zaida says he has symptoms that will need treatment. This, a man who has worked hard to destigmatize mental health care for the people of Gaza. It's hard to find anyone who hasn't been touched by tragedy. We found this man still sick and unsteady with a head injury 
returning to what was his family home, pointing to what had been the sitting room. We were sitting, all of us, safe, and they hit us. We have no rockets, no missiles, nothing. He has little left in life now and holds on tightly to his little girl, Malak. Her three teenage sisters are all dead. Another, nine years old, is in a coma, and she's peppered with shrapnel wounds. Another traumatized child, with a father who also needs help. Terrible scenario. Andrew, within this month of conflict, we've seen the UN make flash appeals for help. The international community is going to try and, of course, uh, gather money together, but that takes time, and also getting that money into the region takes time and for the issues to be implemented uh, fully. Uh, what sort of evidence is there that that sort of help is on its way or that there are at least uh, uh, notions that help will be there soon? Well, firstly, there is an immense amount of work going on amongst uh, non-government organisations and uh, organisations that are already in existence, Palestinian organisations with psychologists on board, and mobile groups going around from uh, trauma centres also to uh, districts where there has been damage, and that there are many of them, uh, are trying to sort of get programmes going. But the demand is massive, and, and so many people are not coming forward. Uh, UNICEF uh, is calling for more funding so that they can get uh, more stations in place, more places where people can just really drop in centres. Uh, and the head of the Gaza mission uh, had this to say. We know that there isn't a single person, let alone a child, in Gaza who isn't deeply affected by what's happened in this latest escalation. We in UNICEF is estimating that of those, at least upwards of 400,000 require immediate Psycho psychological first aid, which is a specific kind of intervention in order to just give the, the essentials to cope with the immediate loss and um, exposure to deep, deep uh, traumatic events. A big need there because uh, there are really millions of dollars required uh, to get psychological assistance in the future uh, for Gazans, not just children, but also their parents. Uh, the overwhelming feeling in this district of the few people we've seen who've returned to their homes is that uh, really, uh, how do they cope now? What do they do next? That is the real dilemma. Who do they go and see? What's the first calling point? Is it practical things or is it psychological things? And regardless of whether or not there have been tunnels in places like this. Uh, people say that there hasn't been, but regardless of that, uh, there is no doubt that the majority of the deaths are civilians, and in places like this, the needs are very big indeed. Indeed, Andrew, and of course, we'll have special coverage from uh, Gaza throughout the day, and we'll be coming back to you as well from Suja'i for the moment, Andrew Simmons. Thank you.